Amanda. This week you asked me to read Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs. This is one of my favorite books because it takes an old fairy tale and makes it a lot different. This is written by Mo Willems who writes our pigeon books and our Piggy and Gerald books. So if you like to read those, I bet you're going to like this book. Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs. Once upon a time, there were three dinosaurs. Papa Dinosaur, Mama Dinosaur, and some other dinosaur that happened to be visiting from Norway. One day, for no particular reason, the three dinosaurs made up their beds, positioned their chairs just so, and cooked three bowls of delicious porridge at varying temperatures. Oh boy, said Papa Dinosaur in his loud, booming voice. It's finally time to leave and go to the, uh, someplace else. Hee hee hee! Yes, continued Mama Dinosaur. I'm sure hope no innocent little succulent child happens by our unlocked home when we're, uh, someplace else? Then the other dinosaur made a loud noise that was something like a big evil laugh, but it was probably a polite Norwegian expression. The three dinosaurs went someplace else, and were definitely not hiding in the woods waiting for an unsuspecting kid to come by. Sure enough, Five minutes later, a poorly supervised little girl named Goldilocks came traipsing along. Just then, the forest boomed with what could have been a dinosaur yelling, Gotcha! But I'm pretty sure it was just the wind. The loud noise was immediately followed by another loud noise that sounded kind of like, Be patient, Papa Dinosaur. The trap is not yet sprung. But that could have been a rock falling or a squirrel. Either way, Goldilocks was not the type of little girl who listened to anyone or anything. For example, Goldilocks never listened to warnings about the dangers of barging into strange, huge houses. So as soon as Goldilocks came across a strange, enormous house, she barged right in. Inside, Goldilocks smelled the three bowls of delicious pudding. Mmm, said Goldilocks. That chocolate pudding smells delicious. If only I could get all the way up to the top of that counter. Then Goldilocks noticed a very tall ladder that just happened to be there and certainly wasn't left there on purpose. Goldilocks climbed up the ladder and found herself face to face with three gigantic bowls of chocolate pudding. The first bowl of chocolate pudding was too hot, but Goldilocks ate it anyways because, hey, it's chocolate pudding, right? The second bowl of chocolate pudding was too cold, but who cares about temperature when you got a big bowl of chocolate pudding? Not her. The third bowl of chocolate pudding was just right, but Goldilocks was on such a roll by now, she hardly even noticed. Soon, Goldilocks was stuffed like one of those delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons, which, by the way, are totally not the favorite thing in the world for hungry dinosaurs. Tired and groggy, Goldilocks noticed three chairs in the living room, so she climbed down the ladder and walked out the kitchen. The first chair was too tall, the second chair was too tall, but the third chair uh, was too tall. Goldilocks wasn't going to climb just to sit in some chair, so she hiked over to the bedroom. When she got there, Goldilocks noticed that the beds were also gigantically big. What is going on here? groaned the little girl. The bears that live here must be nuts. Mm. Just then, 
The room filled with a loud, booming noise that was either a passing truck or a dinosaur gloating. A few more minutes and she'll be asleep. Delicious, filled little girl bonbons are yummier when they're rested. Even a little girl who never listens to anyone or anything heard that. Goldilocks took a minute to stop and think, which was longer than she was used to stopping and thinking. Home sweet dinosaur home. Hey, she told herself, this isn't some bear's house. This is a dinosaur's house. Say what you like about Goldilocks, but she was no fool. As quick as she could, she ran to the back door and got out of there. Just then, a loud plane flew by, which sounded pretty much like a trio of dinosaurs yelling, Now charge! Or the Norwegian expression for truly bonbon time. Suddenly, and completely coincidentally, the three dinosaurs rushed through the front door. But they were too late. Goldilocks was gone, and all that was left in the house were three disappointed dinosaurs. The last page always makes me laugh. And the moral of our story is, if you ever find yourself in the wrong story, leave. And the moral for dinosaurs is lock the back door. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed that book. One of my favorites. I think it's such a silly book and so fun. I love Mo Willems. He's a great author. For next week, remember to let your parents email me and let them know which uh, book you want to read for next week. I have two choices for us. Our first choice is a book called Not Quite Narwhal. It's a book about a little animal that doesn't quite know what it is. And our second choice for next week is Even Superheroes Have Bad Days. This is a really, really excellent book that teaches us that even the strongest people can still have a not great day. So make sure that you let your parents know which book you want me to read for next week, and I'll see you next week. Bye!